Exposition by Charles Hedden Spurgeon John 17, 15-26, Matthew 26, 36-46 We will read, this evening, a portion of two prayers offered by our Divine Lord and Master on that night in which he was betrayed. The first is that memorable intercessory prayer of his recorded in the 17th chapter of the Gospel according to John. John 17, 15. I pray not that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. Christ did not pray that his disciples should be taken out of the world. It is very seldom that we ought to present such a petition. If that had been a proper prayer for us to offer, it would have been authorized by the Master. There are times when, in great pain of body, or in deep depression of spirit, the believer, like Elijah under the juniper tree, requests for himself that he may die. If you ever do pray such a prayer, utter it very softly for the Master does not authorize it and that is a matter that must be left to the Lord of life and death. Jesus says here, I pray not that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. Sin is the real evil of the world, the danger of our being entangled in worldly customs, or dropping into the evil ways of an ungodly generation. Christ prays that we may be kept from the evil that is in the world and we, also, may and must pray that the Lord will keep us from the evil by which we are surrounded, and especially from the evil one who seeks our destruction. 16. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. They are of another race, they are swayed by other motives, they have another life, they have another destiny, they are not of the world. Is that true of you, dear hearer? We are reading out of God's book, remember. This is the description of Christ's people, does it describe you? They are not of the world. They are not worldly, they are otherworldly. Their thoughts and hearts are set upon the world to come. 17. Sanctify them through your truth, your word is truth. What? Do they need to be sanctified? They are not of the world and are kept from the evil in the world, do they need to be sanctified? Yes, we shall always need sanctifying until we reach our heavenly home where sin cannot enter. Every day we need the sanctifying influence of the Holy Spirit to lead us unto holiness. Sanctify them through your truth, your word is truth. It is only the truth of God that can beget holiness. False doctrine is never the medium of sanctification. You can tell which are false doctrines and which are the true by our Lord's own test, by their fruits you shall know them. The same men who reject the old-fashioned doctrines also rebel against the old-fashioned style of living. Loose living generally goes with loose doctrine. There never was an age in which the doctrines of grace were despised, but, sooner or later, licentiousness prevailed. On the other hand, when we had Puritan teaching, we had also pure and holy living. This prayer is still needed for all Christ's disciples, sanctify them through your truth, your word is truth. 18. As you have sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. This is the original missionary society and the model for all others. Christ sent, commissioned, of the Father and every saint commissioned of Christ. Are you carrying out your mission, O oh you people of God? How dare you call yourselves by that name if you have no mission to anybody? If you are living here only for yourself, how can you belong to Christ who never lived a moment for himself, but always lived wholly for others? 
19. And for their sakes I sanctify myself. I set myself apart, as one who is consecrated, dedicated, devoted to a grand design. 19. That they, also, might be sanctified through the truth. This is our Lord's prayer for his disciples. In the ninth verse we read, I pray for them, I pray not for the world, but for them which you have given me, for they are yours. Now our Lord Jesus prays for those who are to be his people. I wonder whether there are any of them here tonight? 20. Neither pray I for these, alone, but for them, also, which shall believe in me through their word. There is a great company of people who are not, at present, believers, but who shall yet believe on Christ through the testimony of those who are already believers on him. O oh God, call out many such through our word. 21. That they all may be one. This is Christ's prayer for all those who shall believe on him, that they may be converted and brought into the one church together, with those who are already there, that they all may be one. 21. As you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they, also, may be one in us, that the world may believe that you have sent me. Christ would have all his people joined in communion with himself and with his Father. And when that is the case, then will men know that Christ came into the world for a definite purpose, that the world may believe that you have sent me. 22-23 And the glory which you gave me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one, I in them, and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one. Christ is the incarnation of God and the church should be the incarnation of Christ. Oh, when shall this great prayer be answered? 23-26 And that the world may know that you have sent me, and have loved them, as you have loved me. Father, I will that they, also, whom you have given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which you have given me, for you loved me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I have known you, and these have known that you have sent me. And I have declared unto them your name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. A very short time after our divine Lord offered this intercessory supplication, he prayed a very different prayer, in a strangely altered style. You will find it in the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 26. Remember that there was a very short interval between the utterance of the majestic prayer I have been reading and the presentation of the cries and tears of which we are now to read. Matthew 26, 36-40 then came Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and said unto the disciples, Sit you here, while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then said he unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death, tarry you here, and watch with me. And he went a little farther, and fell on his face, and prayed, saying, O oh my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, nevertheless not as I will, but as you will. And he came unto the disciples and found them asleep, and said unto Peter, What, could you not watch with me one hour? He felt the need of human sympathy in that awful hour yet he trod the winepress alone. 41. Watch and pray, that you enter not into temptation, the spirit, indeed, is willing, but the flesh is weak. 
admire the tenderness of Jesus in making this apology for his disciples. What he said about them was true, but it is not everybody who would have uttered that gentle truth at such a trying time. Dear friends, make excuses for one another whenever you can. Never make them for yourselves, but often make them for others, and especially when some treat you as you think very untenderly, be the more tender towards them. 42-44 He went away, again, the second time, and prayed, saying, O oh my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, your will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them, and went away, again, and prayed the third time, saying the same words. You cannot use much variety of language when your heart is very heavy. You will usually dwell upon just a few words at such a time. Do not blame yourself for doing so, it is natural, and it is right. Even your Lord, the master of language, prayed the third time, saying the same words. 45, 46. Then came he to his disciples, and said unto them, Sleep on now, and take your rest, behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going, behold, he is at hand that does betray me. May the Master never have to say this concerning any of us, for his dear name's sake. Amen.